why do we choose algorithmic substance tools? In short, it was all about how good the images look and what tools would give us the best quality we can possibly get out of them. So with Substance, we wanted to make sure that we had an arsenal of, of tools that would give us the texture quality, the, the precision, the efficiency, as well as the um, usability that we could, whatever, depending on what's on the market, we just wanted to find that right solution at the time. Well, in this project, we had a few different challenges. We had a, a very hostile environment that we had to author, and we also had two fairly completely different uh, characters that we had to create. One of the things that we, that we felt was, was great about using the algorithmic tools for this is their ability to allow a digital artist to uh, create a, a sense of realism uh, in textures and materials, but be able to do it uh, very quickly. With Substance, what they're trying to do is they're trying to bundle everything into a one-stop shop where a texture artist can just open up one application, maybe two applications, and be able to get everything done in a very consolidated, clean manner. Two things uh, specifically like between, between painter and designer uh, that are really important for uh, digital, uh, digital artists is to be able to create uh, author textures from scratch but also to be able to populate uh, surfaces, uh, sometimes vast environments or a large number of, on a large number of assets but be able to do it very quickly. So the, the, the two aspects that are really important to balance is between authoring and uh, procedural uh, generation. And that's where I feel that the algorithmic tools really shine in the sense that the artist can use uh, and direct procedural solutions, uh, but also do as much authoring as, as is required. There's a lot of solutions in the market that are a lot more uh, heavy handed on the procedural side of things and some other solutions that just require the digital artist to author everything from scratch. So it's a nice synergy between the two approaches uh, in both designer and in painter. Okay, in this video we're going to discuss the concept art done for the promotional piece. In the beginning we started with um, good old fashioned drawing and painting which is the foundation for everything we do at Romobox Studios. Uh, we concept with um, paper and pencil and digital format as, uh, for everything first and foremost before we really kind of dive too deeply into 3D. We feel that um, we get a purity of thought and a little bit more um, uh, efficient development and focus on the, the look um, in a 2D manner before we really dive too deeply into something like 3D. Um, those first uh, pieces were kind of inspiration to kind of give uh, us an understanding of what the final look will be like and these are more of the um, concept designs for the dragon to kind of get a sense of what uh, uh, what kind of options we were looking at we just kind of wanted to flesh out things initially in a, in a 2d world using um, traditional manners uh, then we did do some 3D detail exploration using uh, uh, sculpting, digital sculpting, and we did try to um, borrow from uh, nature as much as you possibly can to kind of give that um, sense of realism. We continue to progress and add as much detail as possible as we conceptually designed this, this creature. Um, there was a lot of challenges that we had to um, kind of kind of a attack and uh, we felt that we did a good job in the sense that we balanced a, um, a uh, original looking creature with um, traits of a conventional dragon. Uh, there was a lot of exploration in the sense of proportions, size, uh, color, and, um, and personality. We did some design for the environment. Uh, there was a lot of um, uh, fearsome aggressive rocks that uh, that really kind of conveyed a, uh, a mood. And um, moving ahead, we have a uh, some concept art of the um, the night. The night was a um, was a great exploration because we really wanted to kind of make sure there was a balance between a medieval theme with a more Asian inspired samurai look and also some more modern flares. 
Um, we did a lot of um, research from looking at traditional garb to some more stylized concept artwork and we intermix as much as we possibly can to come up with a much uh, much more original type of look. We then also did a lot of ZBrush sculpting designs to help um, give us all of the, uh, the quick iterations of, um, uh, of detail in terms of decoration, uh, size, proportions. Um, we uh, made sure that we looked at a lot of reference for something like the decorations because of the ornateness of the embossing and the trim. So at the end of the day, we had a very nice um, uh, couple of um, pieces that were all developed from concept designs. So in this uh, last session, we're going to talk about the um, modeling and sculpting design of the um, two main characters in the promotional piece, starting with the uh, dragon. The dragon was uh, a creature where we went through quite a bit of iterations for the, the look of it. We really kind of explored um, a lot of different um, elements. And for inspiration, we looked at creatures ranging from mammals, lions, horses, uh, we looked at elephants, we looked at rhinos, uh, and then obviously we looked at uh, conventional lizards like Komodo dragons, iguanas, and we looked at birds. There was a, a pterodactyls, dinosaurs as well for inspiration. Uh, there was a, a lot of different um, elements that we wanted to incorporate in the dragon, but at the same time we also wanted to make sure that we stayed true to what... Um, what the dragon would look like in the sense that it needed to be recognized as a dragon really quickly. So there were some um, some um, conventional aspects of dragons that had to stay within the design and uh, we, we tried really hard to balance the two. Uh, for the head of the dragon, we had to put a lot of work in, in details to make sure that we captured a lot of the uh, very, very fine kind of pore levels um, scales and um, a lot of those kind of details that uh, you have to kind of hold up to when you get really close up as the camera flowed through it. Um, there were color explorations and um, as proportion explorations. We wanted to make sure that um, there was a fearsome, uh, aggressive quality to this dragon and definitely it needed to have a fleshy organic feel to the creature because that was a, a very important factor for, for what we're trying to go for for the design. At the end of the day, we were very happy with what we got. There was a nice balance. Uh, the creature stood out as a very aggressive, very, very um, strong presence. Um, next, we move on to the knight. The knight started off uh, with a 2D design that um, explored the look from a uh, different kind of genres. We wanted to get a knight that had traditional medieval feel, but at the same time, we wanted to add uh, an Asian flair to it, as well as a more modern kind of um, body armor feel to it as well. But the important factor was that this knight had to have characteristics that juxtaposed the organic nature of the dragon. So when you see the two uh, kind of coming at each other, the important aspect to remember is that um, the knight had its own kind of uh, style. It was very clean, had a lot of... Um, decorative ornateness to it and it was a shiny metal as opposed to the dragon which was more of an organic flesh feel so one uh, one thing that uh, you'll see that we did do quite a bit of work on was trying to get um, a lot of this ornate detail across the, the multiple metal armored surfaces at the same time we didn't want to do mass coverage where it kind of gets lost we want to make sure there was a balance between positive and negative space and that there was a motivation to the decorations as it travels from one piece of armor to the next. We wanted to make sure that when the person was, that was building this armor, uh, they had a design sense that they wanted to make sure that there was a reason why there was uh, certain decorative things in certain areas of the armor. Um, a very good example of that is the decoration that you see really close up on the, the gauntlet and the helmet where on a gauntlet you notice that you'll see a, um, a dragon logo that depicts this uh, knight as a dragon slayer. And on the helmet, there is motivation on where the, the decoration would be. On the, 
as much as there is, there are metal qualities and, and the components on the knight, we also wanted to strike a balance and give some characteristics of uh, a soft kind of contrast to the metal by adding kind of a fabric uh, skirt as well as ribbons on the knight to kind of give it a, a much nicer flow. And no detail was spared. We actually went in and added uh, a nice kind of a sim symbol on the sword uh, grip where it again tells the story of the knight as a dragon slayer. And here you see the, the gauntlet where we kind of did a couple of iterations and designing it and want to make sure we get a, capture a lot of detail, uh, especially since we get extremely close up to this, um, this one portion of it. And finally, we wanted to make sure that we uh, added a... Uh, a nice dynamic attack pose. Uh, we obviously started designing it in the neutral T pose, but then we had to make sure that there was some kind of um, a very, very um, uh, dynamic uh, action packed kind of attack pose where you can feel the emotion of the character and you can feel the um, the confrontation based on his 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 uh, his movement. Even though uh, everything's kind of frozen in time, we feel that. Um, the pose of the dragon and the pose of the knight really helps capture what would be the um, the movement if there was a uh, if this was running footage instead of a froze type of uh, uh, a sequence. And finally, you see the turntable of the knight. Okay, in this portion of the video, um, we're going to go ahead and talk about the uh, texturing and look development that uh, was uh, done for the promotional piece. We did incorporate um, Substance Painter in the uh, overall development and um, refinement of the uh, dragon as well as the knight. And in this video, we're going to kind of go over two of the main um, close up shots. Uh, the first one being the uh, dragon wing. For the dragon wing, we went ahead and, and within Substance Painter, we brought in um, the, uh, the wing with the wing arm. And here you'll see that uh, we're trying a bunch of different environments to see how um, uh, how well uh, we can capture some of the details. And um, you're going to see later on, I'm going to try to switch between different uh, environments to see uh, which one brings out the most amount of details and, and allows me to work the best. And um, first thing I want to do is always bring in a bunch of textures that I'll utilize to, um, to kind of uh, help me paint and cover the asset quickly. Um, my first layer, I'm going to go ahead and start with a kind of a, a multiple color, uh, very rich um, subdermis layer. This is kind of the um, the area that um, is sort of uh, between your your the the uh, deepest bloody um, portions of the skin to the top surface where it's uh, mostly the pink skin. So you kind of get a more veiny, um, patchy area and uh, I feel that uh, by adding a subtle amount of this into the ultimate look it gives it a little bit more of um, an organic feel and uh, next uh, the next layer is kind of the high contrast vein map for the uh, the wing itself we we're going to utilize this in uh, a couple different ways and um, we're gonna in here uh, we're going to blend it into the overall look of the, the, the fuse, but we're also using it to drive things like the, uh, the height and the specular. Um, just to let you guys know that um, this project, we're using a, a more conventional um, setup if with the channels. We're not using a physically based setup. We're using more of a diff bump and spec setup. But we will be also outputting uh, emissive as well as transmissive uh, texture maps from Substance Painter. In Substance Painter, um, the great thing about it is that um, there are multiple ways to work, and having the power of multiple of the layer system and blend modes um, is is really as as uh, you can uh, see that it really kind of gives you the ability to to kind of layer and build upon um, different channels, and um, it it kind of gives you like freedom to kind of uh, play around as well. So here I'm just trying to figure out what um, what I can dial in as, a, as an overall look for the diffuse wing. And um, uh, what's nice is that nothing ever is destructive. It all kind of um, allows you to freely adjust things and come back when, when you feel the, it needs to be refined. Um, so I put in a pass of kind of um, or more of a 
uh, subsurface um, light permeating through it, uh, which is the kind of a yellow tone. And uh, this next layer is kind of a high frequency, almost like alien ish lizard like skin and I could have just went ahead and um, used the fill layer but I want to kind of showcase the, um, the fact that you can add this um, substance effect which is the uh, the skin texture substance uh, I went ahead and just kind of painted it on really quickly and it works really well it, it interacts pretty quickly on my machine and um, and I'm here I'm just kind of dialing the fact and also dialing the color to look a little bit more like the kind of the kind of color I want for the, the dragon itself and I'm also using the same texture on the uh, the wing of the arm and I'm making sure it's nice and high frequency and and I'm going to uh, ultimately blend this in a little bit as well so the substance having the the power of the substances coming from substance designer is a really big plus for this program because you can go ahead and and uh, if you're very savvy with Substance Designer, you have the ability to go ahead and build a, uh, a nice procedural based texture that you can load into here and then you can apply anywhere you want. And uh, I, I made um, good use of one of the default ones because it really kind of gave me the look I really wanted from it. Uh, moving ahead, what I did was I loaded up a um, kind of a, a bump map that uh, was baked out from the sculpting that was done for the wing arm and this kind of um, gets added uh, with the already um, applied kind of uh, alien skin kind of reptilian skin on the arm so I want to make sure that um, the sculpt is showing through so I'm um, for the most part applying that as a as a height uh, height map on top of it and I'm going to push that uh, pretty aggressively to kind of get a nice um, nice feel out of that the um, the fact that you can just quickly load in a map and apply it where you want to in Substance uh, Painter has 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 uh, made the workflow a lot more efficient and um, the ability to kind of move around and navigate is is really nice because there isn't a lot of um, palettes that you have to open and close to get to what you need to a lot of what you need to um, to, to uh, get your work done is at your disposal right in front of you and uh, it doesn't really take a long time to ramp up on, on it. So now that I have some of the um, the overall base look of the, um, the skin worked out for the arm, what I want to do is that I want to go in and try to do some painting on top and what I'd love to do is first just kind of do a little bit of coverage and this will give it um, a nice variation. Uh, I'm using one of the um, particle brushes to quickly cover the um, the arm with some nice nice um, strokes of uh, paint but you'll see that what I do is um, first I cover it and then go back in with a nice organic brush and I'm gonna take away some of it to give it the nice patchy feel and here I'm just getting the um, the wing itself to um, to be a little bit more dialed in and uh, I'm gonna add a paint layer as well on top of this and I'm gonna go ahead and um, do the same thing here what I want to do is I want to make sure that I make the wing and the arm itself a little bit more connected and uh, the best way to do that is make sure that there's a gradation in color and tone between the wing and the arm right now it's a very clear delineation and uh, that makes it look a little bit fake and a little bit too CG. So I'm going to add a layer and uh, after I dial in a little bit more of the detail and get the color a little bit more to what I want, I'm going to go back to a particle brush and I'm going to start off with more of the, um, probably start off with the, a particle brush that's uh, more like the vein brush and see what I get out of it. Um, I'm going to try it here really quick and we're just going to do some quick exploration. The particle brush is fantastic because what it does is it gives you kind of coverage without having to actually paint every single uh, area of your surface. It kind of gives a, um, a more natural feel because it's obeying the uh, physics of your geometry and the curvature and the, the structure of your your um, 
your uh, geometry as well as um, you can dial in the amount of gravity and, and effect that you want on it. So the, the vein brush is nice, but it's a little too curly, a little too whimsical for me. I want to go ahead and go into the effects and kind of mess around with it and see if I can get something a little bit more, um, a little bit like finer and streakier, uh, something that looks more like the map itself. And... Um, see if that helps as well. So as you see here, what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to make a connection between the color tone of the wing as it transitions to the bottom of the wing to, to help tie it in with the, the coloration of the arm. Um, the, the, the particle brushes are extremely fun to work with. They are, um, they kind of, uh, they're kind of addictive and they're, they're very, they they very much cut the work down for you because even though it's not going to be concise to every single stroke you make, it does a good enough job that it's almost like you have an assistant for your painting. And it does predictable things. It doesn't do anything. You dial what you want out of it, and it's going to give you what you want. So here I'm going back in, and I'm going to paint out some of that uh, those kind of more spirally, uh, long strokes and just kind of give it a nice, um, you know, broken organic feel to, to everything. So it's a little more patchier. And you can see here this specular pass. I'm still trying to examine it. And the areas where I feel it's a little bit too stringy, I'm going in and I'm just kind of just um, flooding it with more particle brushes and then take it away a little bit to kind of help them. Um, you know, it's almost like uh, you're sponge painting and you're just pulling pulling some of that paint off of your canvas. On uh, uh, Now that I get to a point where I, I feel that uh, I like how it's going, I kind of examine it in different environments to kind of see what um, reactions I get. And I start to um, export out all the maps. And initially, I just push out the uh, diff, bump, and spec. But then I feel, you know, we're gonna, we have a normal map. Might as well just push that out as well. Um, and uh, the process of exporting a substance painter is pretty clear, pretty straightforward, nothing complicated. So once these maps are all exported, I, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add a, um, a couple of other channels to make sure that um, I get um, more of the maps I need for the uh, subsurface effect. Because um, in the shot, uh, as you'll see in the end of this, uh, in a promotional piece, there is quite a bit of transmissive light bleeding through and bouncing throughout the wing. So here I'm just going to add another um, channel, and uh, it's going to be uh, the emissive look, which is, in my opinion, it's kind of the um, the skinned uh, or uh, fleshy blood underneath the uh, skin when light permeates through it's going to catch that and as it as the light part uh, bounces around inside of whatever surface it's going to come out uh giving you that kind of a that kind of coloration so this vibrant colorful um uh look will be what we're going to see through the uh just subsurface transmissive quality so it's going to emit that kind of a look and I pretty much just export that out. And after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, work on another channel, which is the transmissive, which is going to say this: these are the areas that allow for more of that, um, that emissive look to come through. So where it is um, uh, one value, like white, it's going to allow the most amount of um, transmissive quality. And then where it's uh, the other side of the spectrum, which is the dark tones, it's going to block, you know, that um, that subsurface uh, light transmis transmission. And once that's all done, it's uh, really quick to just go ahead and, and just export those maps and, and take it into the, um, uh, the rendering program. And for the most part, what I do is I just kind of utilize the um, the high contrast vein map to um, to be my um, the on off switch sort of uh, map. And there's a quick export here.
And um, here we're in the rendering program and we loaded up all the maps and we do a little a slight bit of adjustment in this program and um, obviously this has been um, lights have been placed and um, you can kind of see some of the effects of the uh, uh, the amazing textures coming out of um, Substance Painter. All the maps are outputted at 4K. We get pretty tight on the um, the asset itself, so we want to make sure that um, uh, we don't um, have uh, low resolution in any of the areas. Um, it's got to hold up. And um, I want to render out a quick frame for, for us to look at. And you can see here where the transmissive map helps, as well as the uh, emissive quality of the map coming through. And um, here is the different components um, that we are rendering out to help us in the comp. You can sort of see this um, incandescent and um, for now pass. And all these kind of get, um, again, adjusted later on. Once we're happy with it uh, and it's pushed through a composite, just uh, the end results are pretty, pretty nice. I think there's um, a very nice organic feel to the whole thing. Okay, so as we go ahead here, we're going to look at the. Um, the uh, night, as we bring in the uh, one of the close-up shots, the uh, asset for that would be the the gauntlet on the left arm, and um, this was a, a fun uh, shot to do. We had to make sure that we um, captured the uh, metallic kind of worn look of the gauntlet, and also a uh, very unique emblem that kind of tells the story a little bit. This uh, emblem was quickly done in. Um, uh, Photoshop and uh, in Substance uh, Painter, we're going to go ahead and apply it on there as a stencil in the layer. But first thing is we're going to make sure we want the base look of the uh, the asset to have a more worn uh, metal feel. And uh, with this um, project in Substance Painter, we went ahead and uh, instead of using a physically physically based set of channels. We set, set everything up using a more traditional diff pump and spec. Here I'm uh, kind of adding a bit of um, uh, roughness and uh, uh, texture uh, to the height and uh, specularity to give it a little bit more breakup. So it's not a pe perfect piece of metal. It's, um, it's, a, it's a piece of armor that has gone through uh, some, some battle, at least uh, just got through some battling. And um, next we're going to go ahead and uh, make a layer and we're going to add the stencil of the uh, dragon on there. And we're going to use a sub uh, material, the, the gold material, and uh, also want to make sure that we have some height on there so we can kind of imprint it a little bit and boss it out. Um, and there's some decoration that we're going to stencil in as well. And maneuvering and, and kind of doing these quick stencils within Substance uh, Painter is very intuitive. Very very straightforward. It um, there's no secrets behind anything. It's uh, it's pretty straightforward. You kind of find your um, image you want to use as a stencil. Drop it into the stencil uh, parameter, and holding S, you can do things like a uh, rotate and um, and as well as um, kind of just to zoom in and zoom out from uh, the area you want to work in, and. Um, it's uh, it's really nice, especially when you're coupling that with uh, with the material, and you're just kind of using the uh, stencil as a as an alpha to kind of cut out the areas that you want. It uh, it goes pretty smoothly, and it gives you a really good representation of what it's going to look like at uh, at the end when you're rendering it out. So it, it is very nice to be able to see all three channels painted at once instead of having to do the um, the old school way of painting one uh, map, which is usually your diffuse, going in and then processing it for the other two to make it more of a scalar, a grayscale image for your specular as well as for your bump um, map and anything else that you need. So 
Uh, next thing I want to do is I want to kind of grime up the areas that are right around the decal. So I make a layer and I'm going to use um, some particle brushes to help uh, kind of give it the uh, worn feel. And letting gravity do its thing, uh, I'm going to have just kind of cover as much as I possibly can. And I'm going to use the same technique where I'm going to go back in, take a more organic brush uh, with a lot of breakup, maybe a like dirt, and then just kind of uh, blotch it out a little bit. and. Um, and uh, reveal some of that metal underneath. And this process works really nice. It goes pretty quickly, and the results are, are uh, very nice. I, I go in there also with a kind of a more um, scratched brush to kind of give us some variation. But um, you know, this is technique is uh, the kind of technique I've been using on an asset like this for a while now, and um, and I think it uh, does a really good job. So. The um, environments that I'm working in within Substance Painter, the, the, the HDRI, it really kind of helps um, give you a sense of what your final product will look like instead of painting in of a neutral, kind of a neutral environment, which you could do as well, but uh, having it kind of in its, in its place sort of really kind of helps, uh, gives you an idea of what it's going to be. So. so again, I'm going to go ahead and add some of that same um, uh, grime around the edges of the uh, the dragon decal itself and I'm using a particle brush to do that and I'm going to go back in and I'm going to kind of paint it out erase out areas uh, using a more organic dirt brush and finally I'm going to try with a slightly different particle brush where you're using more of the, the veinier uh, uh, particle effect and um, it, it doesn't really matter because uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, clean up that area with um, with a, a nice dirt brush that I erase the areas out and uh, it uh, gives it a nice effect. Um, the important thing to remember here is that for this um, asset we're going to there's going to be a very extreme close-up on this with the camera and um, and all the detail here has to kind of really um, stand up to uh, to as close as we get to it. Uh, I think that uh, the work that was cranked, uh, that was painted out of um, Substance Painter, using some some of their excellent features and, and tool sets, really kind of made that process go really smoothly. And the maps here are um, ultimately pushed out at 4K and taken into the renderer. So here we are in the, um, the rendering program, and you can sort of see with um, some of the layers we kind of dialed in a little bit of the metallic look, and um, and it's holding up really nice, and it looks really nice close up. So I'm going to do a quick render of what it looks like. And um, again, this uh, this gauntlet has to tell the story really quickly that this is a um, a person that is about to go out and um, and uh, confront his uh, the dragon, which could be his uh, his calling his in life. But um, here. We wanted to kind of show you some of the uh, the texture maps and the layers from the texture maps, as well as all the other um, channels that we're rendering out to ultimately um, piece together in a composite. The um, final composite uh, looks like this, and we are very happy with the results. We think the team did an amazing job, and uh, we we thought, felt that uh, Substance Painter really kind of um, came through for us on this uh, this particular shot, as well as many of the other shots. In this section, we like to focus on layout and camera scouting. Something we like to do at the beginning of every project is to use simple techniques to quickly explore ideas. In this case, we are using thumbnail sketches to help us figure out what compositions will support our specific narrative. And the objective here is to start building a language for our piece. And once we start see to see some of the candidate shots emerge, then we'll proceed into our 3D explorations or scouting. For scouting, we start using simple shapes and rough models whose sole purpose is to help us explore our camera composition and animation. The idea at this stage is to experiment as much as possible, but also evaluate everything in context in a final edit. The most important thing at this stage is to do some very quick explorations and not get too married to anything, uh, since it's just as important to start understanding which shots don't work as it is to recognize the ones that 
do work. So um, with that in mind, it's important to uh, omit the shots that are just not the best at supporting our particular narrative. And the, the ones that do will definitely start to emerge and stand out. As we get further into our exploration, we inevitably start seeing the style of our piece emerge. In this particular piece, we wanted the subject matter to feel vague at the beginning and slowly start revealing more and more of our stage as we get to the final shots. We also wanted to show off a lot of the texture and surface detail in our assets to help us show off the power of, of Substance Painter. So we start seeing some camera moves at the beginning that are very close to our surfaces and also uh, an animation that blends really nicely from one shot uh, to the next and slowly we start going wider and wider into our shots and finally start revealing you know the 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 action that's more representative in this particular version and we're several versions into our exploration we decided to start introducing textures even though we try not to introduce uh, too much detail into into our previous it was really important here because we needed to know if the camera proximity to the assets was really working and if we also had enough uh, surface uh, detail um, to really support you know our, our, our particular objectives um, so at this stage if the cameras needed to be adjusted uh, they they definitely can be the important thing is to make sure that we're fulfilling our overall objectives as we proceed into lighting and compositing In this section, I'd like to focus on the evolution of our shots as they progress into lighting and then into their final look in compositing. As with other areas of our project, we go through a reference gathering stage to get inspiration for the types of looks that might fit our particular narrative. For this project, we knew that we needed to highlight texture detail and the various material properties, but we also wanted the lighting to remain fairly moody and contrasty. Some of the work that I find inspiring are films by Roger Deakins, Ridley Scott, and concept art from uh, artists such as Aaron McBride. And what these artists are really good at is uh, not being afraid to have some foreground characters remain fairly vague and mostly silhouetted. And um, it simply goes to show that you don't always have to hero light or over light the elements that are the most important in the scene. And uh, one of the golden rules that I like to follow is to allow light to shape surfaces no matter how dark we end up going. So even in some shots that are largely backlit, like this shot in particular, um, with uh, our foreground elements uh, silhouetted, we are always able to read a, a sense of shape. For our storyline, we wanted to create a fairly hostile environment for our hero. Uh, not only is the dragon a very hostile element, but we also have the terrain feel hostile and even the atmosphere feels nearly unbreathable. Uh, we pretty much wanted to ensure that nothing about the setting uh, feel welcoming and therefore heighten the sense of peril for our hero. Uh, and in keeping with that theme, uh, we felt it was important to have smoke, ash, and embers in the air, and also sense the all the optical effects that come from having such bright uh, illumination in such a rich atmosphere. All the atmosphere and optical effects also work very well to give the scene an overall uh, filmic look.